Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's start our message today. The title is The Purpose of the Pit. Can someone say the purpose of the pit? Purpose. Amen. We're not going to read everything, but I just chose a few verses that we will be reading. This is important. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read from Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, in a new international version. It says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Another version says, Even though you planned evil against me, God planned good to come out of it. This was to keep many people alive, and he, he is doing it. Hallelujah. Even though you planned evil against me, this means God will leave your enemies there and will defeat them right there in front of you. Even though they planned evil things against you, do not worry. The one who is backing you up is stronger than any of them. Hallelujah. Good will come out of it. Good will come out of it. And this was not only for you, but it's for many others. This means God will come to your rescue, not only for you, but for others. God will pull you from a dangerous situation, and your other hand, you pull another person, and that's how we make it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I, I won't lie to you, I am extremely convinced that God is about to do something. Amen. I just feel it in me very strong. Amen. What God is about to do, it's something you have never seen before. Amen. You have never heard before. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, it's time to dream big. Yes. Hallelujah. We are used to not sharing our testimonies. You know, we think it's okay, and we take it for granted. Hallelujah. If you have a testimony, send me a WhatsApp video, three minutes, please, and share your testimony. It's extremely important. Amen. God is doing great things among us. Amen. Do not take for granted what God is doing. Hallelujah. So this morning, I am praying for something extraordinary to come your way. I'm praying for something amazing. Uh, I have very few people who are dreaming this morning. Can you dream something extraordinary? Hallelujah. I can see with my own eyes abundance coming your way. I can see healing coming your way. Hallelujah. God is going to do something good. God will do something you could not do by your own. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God is about to show favor to someone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What was meant to harm you, God will change it. Yes. I declare that God will change it in something to bless you. Amen. This morning when I was praying, God kept showing me, uh, where is my shovel, my friend? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God kept show me, showing me a shovel. I know we are true Canadians yes. and we are used to this tool. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But what God was saying was very prophetic. God was saying this morning, difficulties came. Mm. Yeah. Struggles came. Yes. They found a, 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 a room in your home. Difficulties have settled in your home. It is time to dig them out. It is time to shovel them out. Difficulties are coming. Actually, they have come. They sit in your home. They are eating your food. They are disturbing your kids. Today is time to shovel them out. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's shovel them out. I shovel them out. All the financial difficulties, 
Shovel them out. Hallelujah. Like a true Canadian, shovel them out. Shovel them out. Hallelujah. We shovel them out. Shovel them out. Hallelujah. You are sick. Today is the day to shovel it out. Hallelujah. He came to harm you. But today God is saying, I'm going to shush that. I will turn it to your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, this morning, we are proclaiming the end of it. The end of it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I understand the meaning of a shovel. Amen. Do not park your shovel and wait until next winter. Especially in Calgary. It could be winter in five minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, I will be with my shovel every day. Amen. We have the power to overcome our difficulties. Amen. Hallelujah. We just need to connect to the right source. Amen. Get the power and fight. Yes. The enemy is in trouble. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's come back to our message this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. This morning... The message will be built around uh, Joseph's um, life. Um, it's just overwhelming. It is a lot. So I will be picking and choosing a few verses. We're going to build around them. Amen. Amen. First point, it all started with a dream. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many people here have dreams? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. How many people here? I in a pit right now. Oh, glory to God. Just very few. Amen. In one way or another, brothers and sisters, either you are in a pit or you are about to. Hallelujah. So, it's, it's crucial to listen to the message today so at least you know how to get off a pit, out of a pit. Hallelujah. Because it will be coming. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to preach around the story of Joseph. And there is a revelation about the purpose of the pit. Amen. Amen. When God gave us uh, this vision of fruitfulness for the year 2019, uh, I was very excited when we spoke about it. But the, the following days... <clears throat> Uh, every time I thought about it, about it every time I, I dreamed about it, God was not showing me fruitfulness the way I can imagine it, right? Uh, God took me somewhere else and started showing me everything that I needed to do together. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, my sister. I, I have to tell you I was discouraged. You know, I, I want to dream fruitfulness, but I was dreaming the way to fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So God did not show me prosperity or fruitfulness. No. God was talking to me about the way to fruitfulness. Yeah. So I understood that my preaching for the entire year has to be pushing people, yeah. preparing people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some will be fruitful in a month, yeah. others in two months, and so on and so on. But we have to focus on the right thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mana is now going to fall in your hands. That time is behind us. But we have to work. We have to provoke it to come down. Hallelujah. God, that's the reason I started preaching on, on, on uh, sowing and on reaping. Hallelujah. I understood that I needed to preach on that. I needed to preach on the work that was required to get to fruitfulness. Hallelujah. So fruitfulness requires many things. First is seed. You need seed. You need good soil too. Yes. Some of us need help to change the soil. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you're still struggling changing your soil, hallelujah, Pastor Phil is here. Yes. He preached on that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Everyone is connected to the same message. Yes. Hallelujah. Every single person here. Yes. So we need a good soil. We need planting, watering, we need pruning, we need all of, all of that. 
before we reap anything. Right. Hallelujah. It's good to dream about reaping, reaping. There is nothing to reap if you do not plant anything. Yes. And if you plant, you don't water, it will die. Yes. If you don't have a good soil, it might die as well. Hallelujah. So it's not a coincidence if we're talking about all of those things. The route, the, the road to fruitfulness, it's not straight. Uh, I'm sorry. The road to fruitfulness, it is not straight. But we're working tirelessly to make it straight. All the crooked corners, we are making them straight. Hallelujah. Amen. I just learned that the road to fruitfulness was not even paved. It was not. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's come back to Joseph. The story of Joseph that we're now going to read, you can read uh, when you get home. We learned that Joseph was a spoiled child. Was the baby's, was the daddy's baby, boy. Hallelujah. He was spoiled by his father. But even though you are spoiled or even though you go through problems, it does not cancel the purpose for your life. That's right. God has a, had a purpose, had a future for Joseph. And his dad well, loved him just too much. He had many other uh, uh, sons from the first wife and from the second wife, but he loved Joseph. So he started, he started spoiling him. God intended for Joseph to live and run a palace. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at his life, he started actually pretty good. Dad was doing everything Joseph needed to do. Even though he had the dad who was spoiling him, giving him everything, even though he had a dream, a big purpose in his life, he went straight from dad's house into a pit. Hallelujah. Amen. It's sometimes difficult to understand the things of God. You can imagine that this boy who is receiving all that he needs, and on top of that, God spoke to him and gave him one of the greatest uh, purpose in his life. What is he doing in a pit? Hallelujah. Amen. But that's exactly where he went straight. Many of us right now are going through a difficult time. My job here is to keep your hope high. Amen. My job is to remind you the truth. Amen. My job is to tell you Joseph also was in a pit. Amen. But my job as well is to tell you, regardless of what you're going through, your final destination is not a pit. Amen. It is the palace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Your final destination cannot be the pit. It is the palace. How many people want to go to the palace? Amen. Hallelujah. So do not be discouraged then. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according, according to his purpose for them. I want to say this this morning. When we trust God, he takes all the bad things that are happening to us and turn them into something good for our lives. He just said it here. God is the one who causes everything that was meant to harm us into something that is good. Yes, when it's hurting, it is hurting. It's a fact. It's true. But it just for a few moments. It's for a period of time. And if you are spiritual enough to stand and declare the end of that thing, I can guarantee you, as soon as you open your mouth, the end is starting. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that, yes, Joseph went through some difficulties, serious difficulties. This is a person that God 
promised a palace. So he knew, since he was a young boy, he knew already where he was going. But we learn sometimes the hard way. Before you get to abundance, let me tell you, you are going to endure adversity. It's not going to come very easily. It does not come without a fight. One day or another, everyone here, you will leave the law of the lowest at some point in your life. Yes. One day, sooner or later, just wake up. It will happen. If you are not prepared that you can actually fight, you can actually resist, you will suffer. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can extend your, your, your stay in the pit without knowing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. One day, sooner or later, you will go through adversity. It is not something you worked for. It is not something you want. But it may happen, and most of the time it will happen. This is something that will shake you to your core. You, you won't understand. You pray. You don't miss the Tuesday uh, service upstairs for prayer. But something will come your way, unexpected, unwillingly. And then will hit you, or will hit the family members. And you do not understand despite everything you have been doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's time to prepare ourselves. How do I fight against that? How do I react when such things happen? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Joseph was young. Young man with a dream. The dream was given to him by God. In the dream, he saw himself as a leader. A leader, he was leading his family, the brothers and sisters and everyone was bowing down to him. I do not know how it happened that he spoke about the dream, if it was innocently or out of arrogance, I don't know. But he went to, to tell his brothers, you guys are going to bow down to me one day, that's what God said to me. So you understand that this was a little too much for them. First of all, he was spoiled. Them, they were working hard, but not him. He had a good dress and all these things all the time. Now on top of that, God comes into the picture to spoil you for, for the rest of your life? Come on. They said no. No, we, we need to do something. No. So, collectively, they decided to get rid of him because they could not handle that. They developed jealousy in them. It will happen to us when God is, he blesses you with a good job, with a good car, with a good spouse, and then around you it's jealousy. People are going to talk and, and all these things. So, they decided to, to kill him. Through Genesis, from, from, from Genesis uh, chapter 37, through verse 18, all the way to, to 28, it talks about the story, and this is something I encourage you to, to go read. So they took him, they threw him in, in the pit. And at some point, they removed him from the pit, and then they said, okay, let's just, just sell him. And they effect something to just tell the dad he's dead. So that the dad will not bother them. For 22 years, the dad thought Joseph was dead. Because he believed a lie. Hallelujah! This morning I, I plan to talk about the lie uh, when you are in the pit. But I'm going to skip that for next time. <laughs> Hallelujah! So I'm going to go to another point. The Joseph's behavior while he was in the pit. Hallelujah. I will go back and forth, back and forth, just to make a point. You have to understand here that for a person who had a, a big purpose like this, finding himself in a pit, sent down there by his bro relatives, brothers and sisters, brothers, the sisters were just fine, always. They were home, helping, you know, he told us the brothers. This looks like a setback. You may wonder, God, what's going on? How come? 
he should go straight to the palace. Equip him quickly and let him do the work. Hallelujah. But that pit was very important because he helped him mature. That pit was a test. Hallelujah. God used the pit to set him up for his plans in his life to succeed. Hallelujah. God could not really manifest himself fully in him without bringing him to a place where he was alone, he was discouraged, dad was not around, nobody. It's just you and you alone. Sometimes being spoiled the entire life, it's not good. You're not, you're not prepared for anything. You're not prepared to fight. As soon as there is a little problem with your husband, you call mommy or you call daddy. <laughs> huh? The Bible says you will leave your, your, your dad and your mom and go. Yes. Isn't it what the Bible says yes. in Genesis? Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. So sometimes being too spoiled, it is not good. They have to prepare yourself yes. to be strong. Yes. That's what eagles do. Yes. They take the baby eagle, they bring them far. And then woo, you on your own. Man, because they have been talking to you how to do for so long. When you are on your own, everything that you listen without listening because you're drinking milk here, you're doing something, you're having fun. Everything you learned will come back to your mind. Back without notice. And you learn quickly what to do. So the pit is a good thing. Hallelujah. Despite all the setbacks, Despite everything that could frustrate jo uh, Joseph, during that moment of, of desperation, actually, he opened his mind. He developed, he grew up in intelligence and wisdom. He prepared himself for what God was intended to, to, for him to do later. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The story is too long. We're going to cut. I have some shortcuts that I know very well. Yes. Amen. We're going to take them. He got sold. His brothers, I don't know what happened. They removed him from the pit and then they sold him. He ended up being a slave. Where he went, he got wrongly convicted of something he did not do. And guess what? He found himself in prison. Oh my goodness. This is the time you say, okay, I wish I could stay to my, my daddy's house. I was okay there. First, it was the pit. I did not know if I would survive in this thing. Eh? When you think, okay, now at least I'm a slave. I can eat and I can sleep. I'm not, uh, you know, fearing for my, my, my life. Prison. Prisons are tough. So he found himself there. But here's the thing. Because you're going to find yourself in prison. You're going to find yourself in the middle of all walls closed around you, completely closed. Hallelujah. I did not want this um, service to be too long because I have testimonies about prisons. I have been in prison, brothers and sisters. Not because I've done something wrong. Because that was the only way to kill people from my tribe. They collect us because they knew us and they put us in prison. First time in my life to smell prison. And then they started killing people. But for God's grace, I'm, I'm still here. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll talk about another day. Today is Joseph, and it's you and you and you. That is my focus today. Amen. So what I'm trying to say, even if they send you in prison, the Bible say, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the Bible does not say when you are living in your apartment uh, uh, building, right, watching your TV, maybe watch, watch, watching a Christian movie, mm -hmm, that's the way you draw near to God. And in those circumstances, he will draw near to you. God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Regardless where you are, you could be in prison, you could be in hospital, you could be about to be killed. If you draw near to him, he says he will draw near to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Am I preaching good this morning? Yes. So I'm saying this morning, even in a pit, if you, you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Yes. So Joseph made a choice to draw near to him. He was in prison. And the more he was drawing near to God, God was putting in place a, 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 a way out. Hallelujah. And then one day, they brought in two prisoners. Joseph was a smart person and stuff, so he was pretty much in charge of uh, uh, many things and then brought two people in there who worked closer to, to Pharaoh. One was his cupbearer, the people who, who drink and who eat before he eats. So he will be there, hungry, but he will, he will look at the guy who is drinking and eating. You drink, you swallow, and then he waits. <laughs> if you're still alive, he eats. <laughs> if you're dead, many other people are going to die, but not him. Hallelujah. So that very important person was sent to prison. And his baker as well. So I don't know what he was eating at that time because you just put everyone in prison. Those pr people got in prison. And then one night, God caused them to have a dream. They had a dream, but they could not have an explanation to the dream. You know some dreams, they will bug you. It, it, I mean, you will feel it. If you got slapped, when you're sleeping, you wake up and then you feel, oh my goodness. You want to understand those kind of dreams? That's what they got. And no one could explain to them what they were dreaming about. We're not going to go into those dreams, hallelujah. But Joseph, the guy who was in prison, wrongfully convicted, the guy who just escaped a pit and then prison, I, I, I can imagine some of us in there, you know, you're not eating anymore, you're wondering what's going on. But Joseph had time to look at people because of his compassionate heart. And he noticed that these two people were upset. He even reached out to them. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 to 7 says, why do you look so worried today? He asked them. Brothers and sisters, you, you can't imagine when you are in a very difficult moment, a person comes to you and actually pays attention to you. Hallelujah. Pays attention to you. This week I lost my uncle, who is my dad's brother. The only person... Uh, on my dad's side because they killed uh, you know my story they killed most of them uh, so I lost him uh, a few days ago I, I need to go and bury him um, but I was touched by the number of calls and, and, and text messages and from people who knew because I, I don't talk too much myself but I saw so many of you I don't know how you know but I got all the text messages that touches, that touches my heart. I feel that I'm not alone. Amen. It gives me the courage to travel to the U.S. and go bury him. Hallelujah. Yeah. When people are in a difficult time, difficult moment, those little things are very important. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. You probably don't have anything to give me, but a word, a text message, means everything to me. Hallelujah. So Joseph, in this situation, reached out to those people. So, okay, you guys, what's going on? He looked like himself. He was not hurting. He just forgot his suffering. And then said, okay, brothers and sisters, you look very upset. What's going on here? And then they told, they told him. He actually offered his shoulder. You can cry on my shoulder. I don't know why I'm coming back to this. Brothers and sisters, don't look at people, how they dress, how they smile. In here, we look alike. Yes. We look sharp, all of us. Amen. That's the outside. But inside is something different. Yes. Hallelujah. If you don't reach out to other person, 
Hallelujah. And ask a question. Actually, what's your name? We never met. My name is uh, Pastor Julius. My name is uh, Prophet Ukima. How can I? I mean, ask something. Just say, hi, how are you doing? How are the kids? Your family? Yeah. Hallelujah. We have people here. I've been attending the church. You have noticed them. But go to them. Talk to them. If, if they don't know you, yeah. uh, hallelujah, give them the, the chance. Give yourself a chance to know them. Amen. Introduce yourself to them. Amen. This is what Joseph did. Yes. In a prison, he did not know if he was going to be killed himself. That did not count. He was there to give his shoulder for other people to cry. Yeah. And these people were the people who had power, who were making people's life miserable outside there. Hallelujah. Amen. I can tell you when a person like this is in prison, everyone wants to kill them. Yes. Hallelujah. To have a piece of them. Yeah. But he did something different. So they told Joseph what was going on. They told Joseph the miseries and stuff, the dreams they had. He interpreted the dreams uh, for them. For one person, it was very good. For the other person, it was not. We're not going to go into that. Hallelujah. All of this, my point, was in the midst of suffering. In the midst of unbelievable moment for himself. Hallelujah. I want to just say right now that Joseph was in God's plan. Yes. We all know that. Yeah. But guess what? The cupbearer was in God's plan too. The baker was in God's plan too. Everything that is happening around you is in God's, God's plan. Yes. There is no coincidence. There is no chance. All those things is not true. Yes. God purposely orchestrated everything. So Joseph used the ability that God gave you, gave me, and they gave him to reach out to other people, to talk to them, to forget about what yourself you're going through. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph displayed the fruit of the Spirit. I can tell that around him, people were complaining, people were murmuring, even the cupbearer was murmuring, was complaining, was crying, because he, for him he should not be there. Hallelujah. God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are complicated, impenetrable. You cannot understand what God is doing. But there is nothing that happens to you that was not designed by God or that is not controlled by God. We can delay things because we don't understand. He wants to bring you left, you go right. Jonah did the same. God sent him to Nineveh. Go, save my people. He said, me? Nineveh? No. No. These people save, save who? No, 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 no. Just let them die. They don't deserve to be saved. I'm not going to go there. He went a different way. Hallelujah. But it was in God's plan to go save those people even though they were sinners. He refused to listen. He ended up where? Nineveh. Absolutely. God used a fish. God took him, threw him in the pit. And down there in the pit, he saw the hand of God. And he got, been, he got brought where he was supposed to be. Oh, a pit sometimes is good. Yeah. Yes. So I work, this supervisor who is making your life miserable, he is as well in God's plan. Amen. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. It's up to you to align. Up to you to suffer in silence, smile, offer help to other people, and do the right thing. Do not fight those people. God will fight your battles. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know some of our colleagues, they look like possessed. <laughs> they are in God's plan as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, the trouble you're going through, the suffering you're going through, all the questions and everything are in God's plan as well. Yes. It's up to us 
to make that m moment short or long, depending on how we connect with God. It's only God who can remove you from that place. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let me tell you, if Joseph was swearing, was insulting his brothers and sisters, he could be in that pit until today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So those setbacks that we see were just a setup. It was a setup. It was God's setup for a bright future. Amen. Hallelujah. May I give you some hope th this morning? Yes. You have the impression that you're walking in this desert without no end. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a setup. Amen. Connect with God. Amen. Do not swear. Do not insult people around. Do not murmur, but pray. Amen. Hallelujah. It's hurting you, I know. It's difficult. God knows. Connect with the only person Amen. who can change things around. Yes. All of that are in God's plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph had a bright future, but the setbacks were just a setup yes. to align himself properly. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I declare this morning, even in your life, the setbacks you have been experiencing, the setbacks your family has been experiencing are just a setup Amen. to bring you to the destination. Amen. To bring you to this amazing future I was talking about this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To bring you to this extraordinary life Amen. I was talking about. Amen. There is a blessing waiting for you. But there will be setbacks. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not time to cry. Oh, whatever is happening to you. Connect with God. Amen. Acknowledge the setback. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is bringing you somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. God wants you to be gentle with people who are not gentle to you. To be nice with those people who are not nice to you. Hallelujah. Help them, even though they do not deserve your help. Uh -huh. They do not deserve your help, but help them anyways. Do, without expecting anything in return, by the way. Joseph helped. That's it. He did not have a plan. If I help this person, maybe. No. That was not his plan. Hallelujah. This is the key to your blessing. This is the key of my message today. Amen. Luke chapter 6 verse 35 says, Love your enemies. Do good to them. Learn to them without expecting to be repaid. Repaid. That's in the New Living Translation. Then your reward from heaven will be very great. Amen? Amen? I thought this was a mistake. Great was enough for me. But God is saying it will be very great. Uh -huh. yes. That means greater than what you think. Yes. And you will truly be acting as a child of the Most High. For He is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. He is kind to those who are thankful. And he is not kind to those who are, who are wicked. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you can start today acting like a child of the Most High. Amen. By doing the right thing without expecting anything in return. Amen. Without expecting anything in return. Yes, Let me give you an example of something that touched my heart. Yesterday... I was working in the office, and every Saturday, I come here very early because I know by 10, 11, there will be soldiers here cleaning everything. The church needed cleaning, serious cleaning, so people came. Among them was a brother who is part of the cleaning ministry. But he works in Fort McMurray. He does not live in Calgary. So he flies every, every weekend to Calgary. For me and for God, he flies here to clean the church. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I don't even know if he's here today because he does not miss anything. Would you? Hallelujah. 
Uh, who's your husband? Uh, uh, more or less confused. Oh, the, the wife is here. He's here. He's working in the back there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he comes back on Friday because the family is here. The kids are in school here. And the only day they spend together is Saturday. But he's here at nine. Oh. Cleaning, cleaning. And, and, and I left him here. I think I left at 3 p.m. He was still here. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the example of people, people that they have God's uh, heart. Amen. They do. Many of us will spend a little time with the family. He does not. Sometimes he brings even the family here. Hallelujah. Brother Angus, because we're talking about uh, people in, in the church. He came from Winni Winnipeg, Manitoba. Straight to church here to clean. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. He was part of the cleaning ministry. He remembered on Saturday, we usually clean the church. And he came straight. He did not go to say hi to a friend. Another friend over there, another friend over there. He came straight to church. And then he cleaned. Brothers and sisters, those little things do not go unnoticed. Amen. I want to thank the people from the cleaning ministry. Yes. These are people who give without counting. Giving, it's not only money. One of them, a single mother, single lady, she does not drive. She lives as far as you could imagine. I think when I drive from here, it's 45 minutes to get to her home. She is on time here. If it's raining, snowing, it doesn't matter. She's here. And then cleaning. If the people who have the keys are not here, she starts cleaning the windows from outside. Hallelujah. It's important to say those things. Last Saturday, because of the work that they were doing here, the custodian asked them to come in the afternoon. She missed the message, which means she was here at 10, cleaning. So I heard someone singing and cleaning. So I went to check. I said, sister, what are you doing here by yourself? I'm cleaning. She was cleaning. These people, the custodian as well, at any time, sometimes I get here at night, he's here. Sometimes I have a day off, I come here very early, he's here. I don't know when he goes to work. I don't know when he takes care of the family. Brothers and sisters, those are the special people for God. Amen. God will remember them. We probably have nothing to give them. But God will remember them. Yeah. Third point. God has a plan to get you out of the pit. Hallelujah. I say that for the cupbearer to be in the pit, it was not a coincidence. It was God's plan. So after Joseph uh, interpreted the, the dreams, the cupbearer, especially him, he was happy. Because the dream was to bring him in his office full strength. So he was happy. And Joseph told him, but you know, I'm here. Just remember me. Right? Okay. Well, once the cupboard was outside, the power restored, full strength. He forgot about Joseph. He forgot everything about that guy. For two years, Joseph was in prison after the guy was out. You may be wondering if you have a calling in your life. They make you sit two more years. That's so good. Hallelujah. Two more years, I'm sitting again. Two more years, they ask you to be an usher. Two more years, they ask you to be the one taking care of the vehicles outside. And you have a calling. Hallelujah. You know that you can preach better than that guy who is talking right now. You know that. But they make you sit. Brothers and sisters. Things can go through your mind. It's okay. Hey, 
this guy is French. He should probably preach in French. I speak English fluently. I have a calling in my life. But they make me sit. Hallelujah. All of this is in God's plan. Amen. The more you murmur, the more you say things, the more you are increasing your stay in the pit. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people right now I'm talking, they have taken some decisions in their life. They are, instead of extending the stay, I can see the stay uh, shrinking, becoming small. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever your setback is, I can see it shrinking because just you understand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is sovereign. Yes. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever he does is perfectly on time. God will never be late. That's right. Never be late. The Bible, after everything I've read, it shows that Joseph was getting closer to God. Closer and closer. When there are two more years of pain and suffering, he uses the two more years to grow in maturity, to grow in, in wisdom, to grow in intelligence. Hallelujah! To grow in humility. Everything contrary probably to the person he used to be. Hallelujah! And God comes again in the picture. Every time you align with the will of God, every time you listen to God and you do what God is trying to make you do, God put in place something. Hallelujah. When you are rebellious, they stop. Until you understand, and then God can move again. Hallelujah. We commend God. Do you know that? We do. When we become rebellious, he stops. He steps on the brake. Absolutely. You want your vehicle to move? Don't be rebellious. And listen. Two more years again. Because Joseph needed two more years. He was humble, but they needed a, a new level of uh, humbleness. He was mature. God needed a new level of maturity. Hallelujah. You may be here suffering for something. There is no husband. There is no children. There is nothing. Maybe God is bringing to another level. Another level where you will produce quickly. Quickly, without no problem. God calls Pharaoh to dream. And to remember his dream. And to be troubled by his dream. He brought everyone. You know the king is a king. They bring you. We need someone to, to tell uh, Pharaoh what his dream is. People are shaking. Because sometimes when you, when you say something that is not right, they can kill you. And the cupbearer, the very person who knew Joseph in prison, said, okay, well, hang on a minute. I know a person who actually can help you because he, he was able to help me. I was in distress. I got something. I did not understand how to read this. But he came and he explained to me. And whatever he said happened. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pharaoh said, bring him up. You are in prison, but the king, the president of the country, Truro himself, said, I want him. Get cleaned, dress up properly, let's go to the palace. Hallelujah. The cupbearer remembered him. But that was in God's plan too. And Joseph did what God taught him to do. God helped him understand Pharaoh's um, um, dream. It was about the, the fourth uh, coming uh, um, famine and prosperity. Hallelujah. But no one could explain that. And Genesis uh, chapter 41 verse 33 says, Pharaoh should find an intelligent and wise man and put him in charge of the entire land of Egypt. After Joseph explained to Pharaoh what his dream was, he gave him an advice. He said, Mr. King, you should find a person that you're going to put in charge to look after everything because famine is coming. We're going to live a certain time 
of abundance. But after that, it will be famine everywhere. So if you listen today, you will take some disposition. So when that happens, it won't affect you. This period, we're preaching all these messages in for a person here. The pit is coming. It will be deep. But if you listen today, you will know what to do once you're there. This is not just a message like every message. Hallelujah. Genesis 41, 37 to 38 says, Can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled by the Spirit of God? Okay, this is Pharaoh talking. Hallelujah. Pharaoh is talking about Joseph God. So his choice was not Joseph. He said, oh my goodness. Can we find someone else? Not, to, not you. Not a Jew. Someone else. Who is like this man who apparently is filled by the Spirit of God. Definitely, Joseph did not say, <clears throat> actually, I can help. I already, I, always, I already helped with the interpretation. I know more than all your people. I can help. He did not say that. He just gave the interpretation. He gave an advice. And he stood there. When it's your time, it's your time. It's your time. Don't fight. Do not fight. It's your time. It's your time. Hallelujah. It's someone's time today. Uh -huh. You have been fighting, fighting. I'm saying it's your time. Do not fight anymore. Joseph did not fight. Joseph did not offer his services. Joseph did not give a hint that I can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He just watched God promoting him. Let somebody today in this church be promoting, promoted by God. Amen. Hallelujah. You were there staying and waiting and so Today, let you be promoted by God. Yes. You're not a person who talks a lot. Yes. You have been attacked by the devil. In all ways, you stayed mute and you prayed. Yeah. Let God promote you today. Yes. Hallelujah. From a healing to a higher level of healing. Yes. Promote you to service. Hallelujah. Yes. This morning, in Jesus' name, Amen. Pharaoh said this to Joseph. That's in Genesis 41, 39 to 41. Since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is not Joseph saying, okay, actually I'm available. Actually I can, no. Pharaoh himself. Amen. Pharaoh is not a friend. He does not pray to God. You understand? And actually that guy, Joseph, is coming just from, from prison. He says, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you. Clearly, without exception, without any doubt, no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. Wow. Hallelujah. This is a child that was a, a, a daddy's pet. Oh, give milk. Oh, massage here. That's all he was doing. Hallelujah. And then we sing here, there is nobody else who is as intelligent as you are, or as wise as you are. Where those abilities are coming from? From the pit. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The pit should, should teach you a lesson. Yes. And Pharaoh says, you will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Oh my goodness. A prisoner. He was probably wearing prison clothes. I don't know. Oh, everyone, including the cup bearer, will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that in your struggle, I'll work on everywhere you are. I pray that the person, the, the big boss, will only be the only one you can take orders from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I invest you with an authority, spiritual authority, 
everywhere you walk, you will have the authority in you. Yes. Only God will be higher than you. Hallelujah. Yes. We will speak to mountains and they will come down. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. they will come down. Yes. You will see attacks from far and you will bring them down. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. A prisoner. Amen. Amen. This morning, he was in prison. Yes. By noon, yes. they just promote him to the highest position. The king himself, Pharaoh. You know Egypt. We don't talk about Russia. We don't talk about USA in the Bible. Amen? Have you noticed that? Yeah. And we don't talk about Canada as well. <laughs> Amen? When we preach, we, we try to <laughs> throw Canada in there. But in the Bible, there is no Canada. Have you noticed that? So Pharaoh was like this guy, Donald Trump. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because Egypt was the most advanced country in the world. Even stuff they were doing, they were building. At that time, 2,000 years ago and stuff, until today, we can't even figure out how they did. We can't. And what is amazing, even themselves can't. <laughs> when they ask them, okay, how did you come out with this? We don't know. They don't know. They actually need help from other people to figure out <laughs> themselves. If those things were not big and were not in Egypt, right? Yeah. They, they, they could probably think you went to purchase them. No, they are big. You cannot buy them. So they did them. Hallelujah. So Egypt, Pharaoh, was the highest authority you can imagine yes. eh? before the Romans came and stuff. Hallelujah. So, my point here is, Joseph was released from prison and put in the place of high, high authority. In just one day, in a few days, there was no transition. You speak from God's mouth and then God switches you completely. From prison, you become the boss in the palace. Hallelujah. But, Every day we rejoice. Oh, I went from the pit to the palace. Every day. My point today and yesterday and the other weeks I preached is not the palace. It's how we get to the palace. Yes. How we get to fruitfulness, if you're following me. You understand? The wisdom, the intelligence Pharaoh is talking about. He did not acquire those things in the palace. He came with them in the palace. He did not leave his home with them. He learned them. In the pit. From God himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Today let this story of Joseph be our story. How to behave. An example. When we are treated unfairly. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters. Focus on God. Keep your eyes on God. Yes. And live a life that is straight. Live a life of integrity. And have confidence that God will come through the doors, find you in the pit, find you in a prison, and raise you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last point, the purpose of the pit. The pit had a purpose. It was to bring Joseph to a point where he will cry out to God. For sure, God used that place to train him. You can be trained. You can have diplomas. You, you can be very intelligent. But the pit has a purpose to bring you to cry out to God. Amen. If God is not in the picture, my friend, you are wasting your time. You can take all your diplomas and burn them. Are you following me? Yes. So for me, the purpose was to make him cry out to God. Yes. For God to intervene in his situation. Yes. It's not the knowledge you acquired at home. It's not everything that your dad was been, has been teaching you. It's a matter of bringing God in your situation. Yes. Hallelujah. I was saying that Joseph went from being a dad's pet to, to the pit. Without transition. 
But because he cried out to God, his situation changed. Amen. Changed. He was not prepared by his father to, to reign, to be the highest, smartest person. He was not prepared for that. God himself prepared him Amen. because he cried out to God. Am I talking to a person today who is saying, I live a situation that is bugging me. It has been like this for, for way too long. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing I can give you. It's just the key to unlock your situation. It's cry out to God. God and God himself can help you. Hallelujah. So this morning I'm saying, no matter what pit you are in, regardless of how long we have been there, Regardless of how you got into that, we are not here to condemn people. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, I always say our church is open for everyone. Yes. We go to the prison to preach. Yes. Evangelist Laura is here. Yes. We go there. We preach. And some people are here. First day to the prison. First day. I have the testimonies. First day. Never been there. And you have this group of men with tattoos and muscles. They all cry out. They all kneel down. And they give their life to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is, our church is opened for everyone in need. Amen. I don't care if you are homosexual. Amen. I don't care if you have killed people. Amen. I don't care if you are unfaithful husband, Amen. unfaithful. We, we all have sins, Amen. but those sins, people cannot see them. Hallelujah. Yes. We have a bad tendency of opening the church for the people who look like come on. what is, you know, I like this. Okay, you come now. You, what is this? Remove it and then come. No. Open the church for everyone to come. Yes. Hallelujah. We love them, all of them. Yes. Despite all the crazy things they do in their bedrooms, we love them. Yes. But we hate what they do. Hallelujah. Amen. We hate the sins they have. Amen. But we love the sinners. Yes. Jesus came for the sinners. Yes. Jesus was hanging around with pr prostitutes. Yes. Because he had a message for them. That's right. They wanted to stone him because he was talking to a prostitute. Hallelujah. Yeah. What do you think you're going to find in a hospital? It's not sick people. Hey, it's time we change our mentality. Open the church for everyone. But be bold to tell them what you're doing is an abomination of our God. It is not acceptable. We do not like it. But we like you. And we will pray for you and we will change you. Hallelujah. So I was saying, regardless of what brought you into the pit, even regardless how many times you have been there, regardless if you are in multiple pits at the same time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Only one thing that God delights in is to come down there to pull you out of there. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I was talking about all of this, I could see some people say, yeah, yeah, he's going to talk about my sin. I have sins too. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm human, like my sister was saying this morning. Hallelujah. Regardless how you got into the pit, regardless how many pits you are in at the same time, God delights to come into there and actually rescue you. Hallelujah. That's my prayer for our congregation today. May God come into the pit where you are and deliver you. Yes. The same way he delivered Joseph. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't know what kind of pit you are in. Yes. Eh? When I say a pit, you see a big hole. No. Maybe that big hole for you is a financial hole. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I call it a pit test. Yes. It's a pit test with finances. Maybe it's a pit test with your marriage. Yes. Some it's a pit test... With immigration, yeah. you have been rejected multiple times and you get to the end. It's probably a pit test with your job. I don't know. Maybe with your kids, the teenagers are becoming crazy. You cannot control them. 
I pray this morning that if you cry to God, yes. God comes into the pit you are in Hallelujah. and delivers you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm very serious. Yes. I do not know your pit. It could be mental illness. Uh, it could be disease in your body. It could be a husband who is nowhere to be seen. It could be whatever your pit is. I, I pray that this morning you understand one thing. The key for your solution is you to cry out to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you cry out to him, he will hear your voice. When Jonah was in this fish, which was his pit, the Bible said, he cried out to God and God heard him. So the distance does not count. Are you listening to me this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. God will come and will deliver you, everyone. Amen. But something you have to understand. You can choose to prolong your stay in the pit. Uh -huh. You can enjoy being in the pit. You can listen to lies, but I'm not going to preach about that, and stay longer in the, pit, in the pit. You can murmur, you can curse God, you can say things, complain all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week, do you know I preached that Hannah did not respond to Penina? Right. Hannah did not listen to Penina's provocation. The, isn't it what I preached last time? Yeah. What was what, the result? The result was he got a child. And not any other child. He got the prophet that God was looking for. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So in one shot, God silenced Penina forever. Yeah. May God silence your enemy in one shot forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The key here is what Joseph did. He did not focus on his circumstances. Yes, it's hurting. Yes, it's bad. Joseph did not focus on that. He focused on God and he went from prison to the highest authority possible in the most prosperous country ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What is your decision today? Hallelujah. I like when it's quiet. What is your decision today? Joseph had the opportunity to murmur, to say all these things. Hallelujah. He could have asked God, why? My brothers are wicked. Why did not do this to them? Why did not send them in the pit? Why me? At least my, my dad loved me. Why did you do this to me? Brothers and sisters, I said it last time. Penina was an instrument in God's hand. Amen. to help Hannah. Hallelujah, remember that? Yes. I know you like Penina. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. For Joseph, the pit was necessary. Yes. It was a necessary stop in order to, for God to intervene. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A child who is poor like he was, you can imagine he is now humble. The Bible does not talk much about that. But I can imagine he was arrogant. Probably he was not humble at all. Probably he felt uh, above everyone else. So the pit was a necessary stop. So God could remove all the pride, arrogance Amen. and from daddy's boy. Amen. Remove everything. Hallelujah. The pit humbled Joseph. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. 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 When he was in the pit, that's where he made a choice. Rely on God. Trust God. Hallelujah. Amen. Trusting God, I wrote yesterday for me, trusting God means trusting him when darkness threatens to defeat what God revealed to you in the light. God revealed to you something, but the darkness comes to attack. Yes what God has given you, yes. your purpose. And when you trust God, God now comes and fights for you. Amen. Trusting God means not knowing why. You have no clue why. You have no clue how. You have no clue what, when, or where. You just trust. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You trust. Yes. Once Joseph took those steps, to trust God. 
He became now in perfect alignment with the will of God. Perfect alignment. That's the time God calls all the brothers to sell him instead of leaving him in the pit to die. Hallelujah. And God calls him to be sold whatever place he was sold. There is a purpose here that we have to understand. God calls those people to review their initial and evil decision, which was to kill him. But Joseph did something for that to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. May God this morning cause your enemies to review their initial and the evil and bad decision they have taken against you Amen. this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I understand I'm, I'm closing. Some people may look at the facts. Some people may look at the circumstances, evidence in front of them, and say, God, why are you doing this? Why? I lead the ministry, the singing, the, the worship ministry. Why this pit? I can't even see the light. Why? Joseph had the same ideas, probably. But he did not ask the question why. He could have done. The pit, even the prison, it does not look like this is the normal way to the palace. How many people go to the palace and then they made a stop into a pit? How many? Nobody. I want to tell you this morning that God is in control. Do not worry. I know your situation may be worse today. You may be completely desperate and your neighbors have no clue. And you will be wondering why. What God is doing? Why are you doing this, God? I'm desperate. I'm, I've been hurting. But God is in control. Amen. Despite. Just because you're asking yourself all those questions, that there is something wrong God is doing. God's ways are not our ways. Jeremiah chapter 9, 29, verse 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. It may not make sense what you go. There is a discrepancy of the person you are and as much committed you are with God and then what is happening to you. It looks like everything is just falling off. Hallelujah. But I would say still, that God is in control. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing randomly happens. God will not allow anything to happen Amen. if it's not for your good. I said anything, even a bad thing, will happen, but it will be for your good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is absolutely nothing that exists that God will not be able to control. So, this morning I'm saying, you are not at the mercy of fate, or luck, or even people. Your enemy thought he was in control. But I'm saying, the enemy is not in control. The enemy thought he was controlling Penina against Hannah. Hallelujah. The enemy thought he was controlling Joseph's brothers against Joseph. But the truth is, God used them to push him Amen. and to push Hannah into their destiny. Amen. The enemy is using everything that is bugging you today to push you into your destiny. Amen. Into your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The pit was ordained by God and God alone. So my question to you is, are you fighting against a coworker or against a supervisor who is making your life miserable? Or a situation, or a family member who is making your life miserable and you're fighting against them? Are you fighting against a fiance or a husband or a, a, a wife who dumped you without notice? 
After everything they promised you, I will bring you to the moon and you believe them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you fighting against th these things? Hallelujah. Amen. I have a good news for you. Without them, you wouldn't be able to fulfill your destiny. Amen. 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 Yeah, I know why you don't say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's difficult. This guy came into my life. I have kids with them, and look at what they have done to me. It's terrible. But you have a destiny that is, was not connected to that person. But God used them so that you can fulfill your own destiny. It's difficult. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may think it was random. It did not happen randomly. It was intentional. Intentional to push you forward. Oh, I know. I know it's difficult. How come? I lost this. I lost my business. I lost this. I lo it was intentional to push you into your purpose. Amen. This person, if you were stay connected, you will stay in that pit for more time than you can imagine. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, you can probably stand up. Just stand up and connect with God. Close your eyes. <coughs> Hallelujah. Despite everything you have been going through, I pray this morning that you come to a place of peace. A place of peace. I pray this morning that you understand nothing happens randomly. Nothing. God has ordered all your steps. Hallelujah. Just connect with God. Don't be distracted. Connect, connect. Connect, connect. I pray this morning that you understand that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray this morning, and I believe, and I declare, that every force that is trying to keep you in the pit right now, this morning, is being broken. It's being broken. It's being broken. You have been in that pit for too long. The force of darkness that are keeping you in the pit are broken in this morning. I declare that this setback you have been experiencing turns into a setup, a setup for your healing, a setup for your promotion, a setup for your abundance, a setup for a breakthrough, financial breakthrough, and all kinds of breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Let the message today sink in you completely and you understand that your connection with God your cry out to God is the key, is the solution. Yes, you are in the pit. The pit is necessary. But you can stay in that pit if you do not understand that you have to cry out to God. How many people this morning want to cry out to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you could lead us in a song, to allow brothers and sisters to cry out to God. All of us, if you can, you come up here and then we're going to cry out to God. I have been in this pit for way too long. Today I'm going to put an end to it. Hallelujah. I will connect with my God. I will cry out. This morning, Lord, your children are here. They humble themselves in your presence, sir. They cry out to you for you to fill them by your presence. Yes. Fill us by your presence, Lord. Fill us by your presence, Lord. Restore us, Lord. Eke se keria, eke se teaha. Membre, membre keria ka. Fill us by your presence, Lord. Membre ke keria ko. Oh, Lord. We thank you for your presence this morning. Touch my brother. Touch my sister. Oh, hi. 
One word silenced Penina forever. I pray that whatever is big, begging you today, hallelujah, be silenced in the name of Jesus. Be silenced forever. Oh, hallelujah. The final situation oh, that is dragging you down, I stop it, I silence, I pull you from the pit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Restore, restore what has been stolen. Restore what has been taken away from your children. Restore in Jesus' name. Fill us with your presence, Lord. Fill us. Fill us. Touch every single person, Lord. Touch our children. They are heavily under attack, Lord. Only you can stop that. You will give us victory. You will give us victory. The Bible says you will set up a table in the middle of our enemies. They have been mocking us for so long. They have been provoking us for so long. Hallelujah. Would you come to our rescue this morning as we cry out to you? Oh, touch my brother. Touch my sister. Restore them. Restore, hallelujah. Touch. Call for them, Lord. Only you can comfort, Lord. Only you can restore us, Lord. Hallelujah. We have been under attack for way too long. It's hurting for way too long, Lord. Only you can say one word. One word. The attack will stop immediately. One word. You will move from the prison to the palace. One word. I pray that God brings you to the palace where he intended you to go. In Jesus' name.